Welcome to Heartbeat episode and uh, today we will be discussing about the EP study. In the last episode we discussed the procedure, how we conduct it and what is 2D and 3D and how they are differing. Now in this we will be discussing what are the complications and what can happen when we are going for the EP study. And this is one of the reason a lot of patients doesn't go because they are being scared or sometimes they are not having the full information. So let me make clear this is a minimally invasive procedure more like an angiography. So here we are going to take the three catheters through the veins and sometimes use the artery. Most of the time it is done from the femoral means the leg veins. Sometimes it is done from the uh, neck vein also. So in the, uh, these are the site from which we insert the catheters. Patient is conscious, he or she may be under the sedation and under the local anesthesia we do the procedure. So it is mostly painless procedure. And after putting the catheters, uh, we conduct the protocols of uh, arrhythmia induction and later on termination and ablation. But what are the things which can happen when we are going for the procedure? Number one, when we are doing any uh, procedure in which we are puncturing the vein, the hematoma formation is the one of the complications, which is very, very rare and due to the good perioperative care, it is, it, uh, it is very less likely. But sometimes the patient is receiving the blood anticoagulants, it may happen. Secondly, these catheters we are going to position inside the heart and heart is always a moving structure, it is not being stopped any time. So these catheters are a bit stiff catheters, sometimes it pokes the chamber and chamber sometimes if it is thin it can come out and we call it as a pericardial effusion, pericardial tamponade can happen. But this is also one of the uncommon and very rare complication. Third, we usually induce the arrhythmia to know from where it is coming. But sometimes the arrhythmia can go out of order and we have to shock the patient. We call it as a DC cardioversion. So patient needs the shock therapy during the procedure to make the patient safe or hemodynamics to return to the normal. So this is a third complication. Fourth, the patient if they are having any uh, what you call circuit on the left side or we are doing pulmonary vein isolation, we are taking the catheter on the left side and the clot formation in, on, on the catheter, though we are taking as much as adequate care, it can happen and wherever the clots goes, either it is brain, kidney or any of the limbs, it can uh, damage that vessel, we call it a stroke to kidney disease. But this is also one of the rarest complications. And finally, when we are giving the RF ablation, so we are giving ablation while the heart is beating and at the same time at the some location where the normal electrical circuit is also nearby to the abnormal. In that situation, the worst thing if at all happens, it is called complete heart block or you can say AV conduction disorder. So the time we are giving the laser, it may affect the normal which can happen and patient may need the pacemaker. So these are the complications which are inherent this procedure. But if somebody asks what is the risk of this procedure, uh, this complication, I will say out of 100, only 1%. So 99% time it is one of the safest procedure, it is done under a very controlled condition and the people who are doing mostly they are very experienced to prevent most of the complication. And finally, not the least, the recurrence. Whatever we are ablating, sometimes it can recur. We usually do one tire, two tire test before making sure that nothing has been left. But sometimes the patient develops the recurrence and then we have to re redo the procedure. So altogether, it is one of the safest procedure of the cardiovascular sciences. It is a procedure it, which give least complications and whatever the complication is, none of the complications is life threatening. Most of the time, it can be prevented and if at all it happens, it can be well treated. And best part of the EP study is that if you are doing EP study RF ablation in PSVT, it can cure the patient from the disease and he may be medicine free throughout the life. So thank you so much. Next time we will be seeing what are the things after the EP study we should be knowing and what we have to do. See you next time. Namaste.